Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Modern Metal Production. Today I'll be covering sample blending and replacement using Slate Trigger 2 Platinum. Um, you can also use this with Dremagog and any other trigger software you have. Sample replacement is commonly used in modern music, not just metal. These replacements can vary from only the shells of the kit to having the whole kit replaced. Samples are known to help strengthen the sound of the kit by blending or completely replacing the instrument. In this case, they'll work wonders for metal songs, such as triggering boss beats and fast double kick patterns. Many producers look down upon samples because they think it's a way of cheating and can often sound unauthentic. I personally enjoy using samples to help support parts of my kit that can sound weak at times. I'm also not made of money, so I can't always afford the greatest preamps and microphones available on the market to record my drums. This is why I use samples, because they are a great way to achieve professional sounding drums. So I'm going to start with this project. Um, this is just the recorded files that I have also used triggers on. What I did for this project was I blended samples with the snare and bass drum. I also helped reinforce the effect symbols. As you can see right here, I got a small china, big china, ride, zillbell, and a splash. The majority of songs you will hear that are sampled usually have the snare drum and the bass drum um, replaced or reinforced with samples. This just helps keep a consistent velocity with each hit. My cymbal samples used here were uh, recorded in my room. I basically took these cymbals, put them into an isolated room, and then recorded them with the Rode NT5. From there I loaded it into the Trigger Instrument uh, app that you can get with Slate Trigger 2. So I'll show you guys how I start um, triggering my drum kit. Uh, I start with the snare usually. And what I do is hit Control D in Logic and I'll bring up the drum replacement editor. And what you're going to want to do, see this is your um, trigger track that it just created for you. You're going to want to adjust the threshold so that you're getting each snare hit. It's better to have the threshold pick up more mini notes than less mini notes. Because what happens is you're going to have to go in and set each one manually that you missed. And when your drums aren't quantized, if you don't want to quantize them, then you're going to have a really hard time aligning the MIDI note right where the snare hits. So it's better to always have more. Uh, I'll just go through this. Something like this seems okay. So then you click OK. And then what I do is I double click on this, and I want my snare hits to be as hard as possible, so I go to Fixed Velocity. And then I hit 127, which is the max velocity in Logic. And then I click Select and Operate, and these many notes will change to the velocity that you've typed in. From there, I just basically go through the track and make sure that each snare hit is right on time with um, the actual audio of the snare. The same process repeats with the bass drum, you just want to make sure that you have everything aligned. Usually your bass drum is more isolated than the snare is, so it makes it a bit easier to adjust the threshold, so it will be less deleting MIDI notes for you. If you have ghost notes in your project and you can't really get them to come out of the trigger program because of all the bleed around your snare, a way that I get to that is I create a, uh, another MIDI track like this. And I do that using the same uh, drum replacement tool that I use on snare. Sometimes it helps to use the drum replacement tool on the snare uh, bottom track, if you have a snare bottom track. There's less bleed into the bottom snare microphone. And then basically what I do is I go and just delete the mini notes that I don't want, that aren't the ghost notes. And then I go into function, MIDI transform, fixed velocity. And right now they're actually at a, a velocity of 11, as you can see right here. And I just process them a bit, and it just helps them bring them through the mix, because in a metal mix it can really get lost, especially in all the distorted guitars and loud screaming and all that. If you want to get into more detail with your drum kit uh, by adding cymbals like I did here, what you're going to want to do is just play through the song once with just this track, so I'm going to try to find all my small china hits in the track, and then I do the same with the big china. And since I don't hit these as much as the two chinas over here, I can basically just go through the song once, stop, add the note, stop again, add, add all these notes. For metal, a lot of the times the drum kits are quantized, so it's really easy just to add these notes in. Uh, sometimes you're going to want to check for the polarity. 
of the um, samples versus your uh, audio tracks. But by adjusting the polarity, it'll bring back the attack uh, and punch of the each instrument that you've triggered. So just be aware of uh, the polarity and the phase issues with those. So now I'll show you guys how to configure a slate trigger with the MIDI notes. Um, so what you want to do is create a software instrument track, go into your MIDI controllers, and then click trigger, open that up, um, then load your sample. And what you're going to want to do now is go into your settings and make sure this thing is checkmarked. And then you're going to want to select your MIDI note. And that should correspond with the piano roll right here. And right now I have the note. Let me find a note with D1 right here. So that will obviously play. You don't really have to adjust these parameters because you're not triggering live audio. You're just triggering a MIDI note. So what I've done here is I've opened up a um, almost finished uh, product of one of my songs I'm working on. One thing I'd like to mention is uh, you always want to keep your project organized. Um, right now I have the guitars over here and this, this whole section's dedicated for drums. Um, it's good. I like to have um, my triggers right by where the actual audio that I'm triggering is. The bass drum tracks, the snare tracks, the toms would be right here, cymbals in the room, and then just the triggered cymbals. So this is the final product. I will solo the drums for you midway so that you can hear the what I'm doing with the triggers. So yeah, that's uh, basically the final uh, product you'll get out of this tutorial. Um, you can obviously change the sound of your samples and load different samples in with Slate Trigger. Um, it's a wonderful trigger tool. It's really worth the money. And I would suggest purchasing Trigger if you're uh, really into sample replacement and want to just uh, beef up your kit a bit. A question that might come up is why I don't put Slate Trigger in the audio track itself and that's because it limits me to how much processing and blending I can do with the uh, the sample. If I put trigger on a MIDI track I can later process it and add effects. Audio waveforms are also somewhat unreliable for triggering so a MIDI grid helps keep the triggers consistent. So I'd like to thank you guys again for watching another episode of Modern Metal Productions. Let me know if you have any questions or comments on the subject in the comments below. And if you have anything that you'd like me to cover, you can also leave that in the comments below. But anyways, thanks guys. See you later.